the amino acid glycine reduces uric acid. And we start right now. Hi, my name is Dr. Pete. I have a PhD in biochemistry and I'm also a Nutrition Network health practitioner. I am an expert in the area of fructose uric acid metabolism and I'm a specialist in the area of gout and gout remission. In the process of gout remission, it is entirely possible that you will end up in the long term still being hyperuricemic. That means walking around with a relatively high concentration of uric acid. Hyperuricemia in men is considered to be 7 mg per deciliter, and in women, 6 mg per deciliter. I routinely get questions about urate-lowering drugs, and I've done a number of videos, for example, on hyperuricemia and allopurinol as a urate-lowering drug, and you can find the link to those videos here. Now, to give you some background about today's video, several months ago, I was experimenting taking a supplement that, that had branch chain amino acids in it. And that's not really the point of this video. But in doing so, and many of you that watch my videos know that I monitor my biomarkers, I saw my fasting uric acid actually reduced in the morning by two units. And I didn't know why that was happening. The only thing that I had changed in my lifestyle was the supplement that I was taking that had this amino acid mixture in it. So I took a look at the mixture and I saw that by far the majority amino acid in that mixture was glycine. So I sat down and I did some literature research and lo and behold, I found that since mid 1940s, the medical establishment has known that glycine, an amino acid, not a drug, this is an amino acid, can be taken by humans and lower uric acid. So let's take a look at some of the details. The first study I found was published in 1946, and this particular work was done both in rats and in humans. And the conclusion of the study was that the uric acid lowering was happening at the level of the kidney. So this is not a production phenomenon like it is in the liver. The glycine is not lowering production. The glycine is enhancing the excretion of uric acid. And apparently the way that it does this is by limiting the reabsorption at the level of the kidney and therefore the uric acid is excreted into the urine instead of being reabsorbed into the circulatory system. Shown on this slide are two more studies, the most recent being 2019. And as you can see here, this was actually a clinical study. Confirmed the earlier studies, the one in 1946 and also the one in 1951. Glycine taken between six up to 12 grams of glycine per day is I take three grams in the morning, first thing, before I've had any food, and then I take another three grams with each of three meals. So I'm taking 12 grams of glycine per day, and I have seen that when I do that, I am able to reduce my fasting uric acid from approximately seven mg per deciliter to approximately five mg per deciliter. And I have to talk about approximations here because because any of you out there that measure your fasting uric acid know that you have fluctuations in this. So basically, I have found that my uric acid is reduced between about 1.5 to 2 units per day by taking a regular dosage of glycine. On this slide, I'm just showing you what brand that I purchased and the glycine that I take. And I, I'm taking a risk showing this to you because in the past I've had some of my viewers come back angrily upset that, you know, like I'm making an advertisement or something. But I, I have no claim to this brand. I don't receive any percentages or any other darn thing if you if you go out and buy this. That I'm just showing you what I use. And the reason that I selected the glycine from bulk supplements was because it doesn't come with any other crap in it. So I would recommend when you go shopping for the glycine, please pay attention to what's in the ingredient list and try to find glycine that is relatively clean. Now those of you that follow me regularly, you've seen this slide before. And what we're talking about when we discuss taking a urate lowering substance like glycine is that even if it is not a specific drug, you are entering into the realm of taking something and putting it in your body, which is going to lower 
uric acid. So there are some concerns. First and foremost, make sure to have a conversation with your doctor about what your intentions are so that he or she knows that you're going to try this. The next thing is with any urate lowering substance, the risk of a gout flare is highest when uric acid is fluctuating up or down in a dynamic way in the circulatory system. So when you go on glycine, you're going to lower the uric acid and you potentially are risking having a flare. Now remember, any urate lowering strategy should be coupled to a high quality gout remission strategy. And along those lines, remembering to look at your metabolic health is super important because gout sufferers typically also suffer from high blood pressure, chronic kidney disease, obesity, type 2 diabetes, kidney stones, heart attack, and stroke. So the likelihood that a gout sufferer is not also suffering from another metabolic disease is super slim. So a complete gout remission strategy will include an eating lifestyle change. And as I recommend in other videos I've published in this area, eating a whole real food diet where we exclude hyperglycemia, alcohol, added sugar that brings in the fructose, processed food and processed meats, because all of these different components activate fructose uric acid metabolism, which drives gout. If you are suffering from a comorbidity, like let's say you have gout and type 2 diabetes, then in addition to the whole real food, with the exclusion of the uh, substances that I talked about, you will also cut into the carbs. You might have to go as low as 20 to 50 grams of total carbs per day. The lifestyle should include a range of different proteins, beef, pork, chicken, and fish, and also a range of non-processed natural fats like lard, beef, tallow, butter, etc. I highly recommend taking a few months to get metabolically stable. That means eating the lifestyle without cheat days, taking good care to keep your ketones between 0.5 and one and really have that lifestyle under your belt before actually segueing to doing the urate lowering using a urate lowering drug or going the glycine route. Approximately 71% of the followers on my YouTube channel have found success with putting out in remission, utilizing this eating strategy, and for many of those individuals, then coupling to that a urate lowering strategy. And with that, I'm going to close. I'd like to thank you for watching this presentation. If you liked what you saw, this is the first time that you've joined me. Hit the subscription button and the bell next to it so you know the next time that I produce the video. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.